What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to sh I'm gonna show you you know the different features of the G1000 at least a little bit because Microsoft Flight Simulator obviously can't do everything that the real one can, but I can show you a few things here and there so somewhat get your feet wet. Okay, this was actually part of what I did at uh, a seminar that I mentioned at Tamiami Airport a couple months back, and I had a lot of fun doing it. I actually did it in a Redbird simulator for the 182T, you know, the turbocharged. So it was just pretty fun. So in any case, over here is the PFD, primary flight display. It shows basic uh, T-Stack. T-Stack is the same in every single airplane. It doesn't matter if it's a big old Boeing 777, 767, or even this, the little G1000, 172. It's all the same. So you have airspeed, altitude, ADI, and DG. Now, right now we're on Nav1. Now, of course, Nav1 is going to be tied in with your Nav1 radio over here. So in order to change that, what you do is you click CDI. So CDI is going to change over to Nav2. And then GPS, GPS is what you put into right here, the GPS, like just like in your Garmin 530 or 540, 530, okay? So that is going to be connected to that. So once again, CDI, you notice right here, I have it on one. So the green is going to show on Nav1. Green is going to show on Nav2 when I click to Nav2. And the GPS, well, of course, those two are going to be completely white because it's going to go off of here. Okay, now I'm actually located at TMB on the radio, on the computer, so of course it's going to show the nearest as KTMB, Kendall Tamiami Airport, which is actually where I live, which is much a little bit, not too far away from me. So you have your enunciators right here, oil pressure, oil low vacuum, because the air, actually the aircraft isn't on, the engine's not on. And actually in the real G1000, well, what happened is you would get a blare, a warning saying, you know, and the reason for that is, you know, the avionics go off of a fan that's actually turned by the engine. So after 30 seconds, I think it is, I don't remember the time, the, you're actually going to get a warning saying, hey, you know, the engine's not turning, the avionics are getting hot, you know. That's pretty much what that is. The enunciators are right above where the GPS uh, loading page is. So, of course, just like in the regular Garmin 430s and 530s, click the Direct 2 button. And actually, this works exactly the same. So this is actually should be 100% familiar if you've ever used a Garmin 430 or 530. So I'll just show you briefly right now, you know, uh, how to use it. Okay. So you turn this little knob right here in order to actually get the letters coming out. Now I'm going to cheat because I don't have a computer. I'm just going to put in a random uh, thing here. So I'm going to put in KTNT, which is Dade Collier Training and Transition. Or I can also put in, well, pretty much anything really, FXC. And actually FXC has an interesting, uh, has a very popular uh, pilot shop called Banyan. It's a FBO and it's really nice actually. It actually has another, uh, has a jet cafe there too. If you ever been there, it's a cool place. So, any case, so click enter, activate. As you can see, this flight plan, well, the flight plan is a direct flight plan. Uh -huh. It automatically aligns, and that's what it shows there. And then over here on the big screen, on the multifunctional display, uh, actually it shows it right here. Actually, this is not a multifunctional display, this is a map. Uh, on the Avodyne for the Pipers is a multifunctional display. In any case, see, right there, and then the range. To increase it, just push it act to the other direction, and that's where that is. All right, and then over here, you got the RPMs, fuel flow, oil pressure, oil temperature, EGT, vacuum pressure, fuel quantity gauge, and electrical buses left and right. All right, now I'm going to cheat and turn on the engine with the feature control E. Okay. That gyro comes up like normal. You do your normal checks within 30 seconds. Make sure the oil pressure is adequate. All right, it's a simulator, so I'm not going to bother checking it. Okay, and I'm going to show you a couple of other things that are interesting about the G1000. At least I'll try. All righty, one neat little feature about the G1000 is right here. Click the inset. The inset is a miniature map of what's right next to you, actually. And it looks different because the zoom in is a different uh, range, of course. That's three nautical miles. That's like, I don't know, like 500 or something. But in any case, it's, it's what this is. And the reason it's there is to help you, you know, so you don't have to keep looking back and forth to look at the map. It's to help with this, to make sure you are safe. So in any case... To get that rid of it, you click off, or you have different uh, views you can do. 
Now I'm sure, I'm guessing this is one of the limits of Microsoft Flight Simulator. It doesn't show all the other D DC LTR. I don't know what that is to be honest, but that uh, what that's what that uh, uh, does. So click off to get rid of it, and to get rid of this, you just click direct again, and actually, excuse me, clear, and you'll be okay. So transponder, transponder is right over here, and transponder is right here. So to click it, you click that button. And then you want to put VFR code. A code is right here. And if you want, so for example, let's say 0267 that you get a squawk code. So you just type in 0, 2, 6, and 7. And that's it. Back, back, and you're good. Simple as that. And then, another thing I forgot to mention about the inset right there, the range control for that is over here. So to increase the range, you push the plus. So, actually, I could probably get it to almost right where it is. Almost. It is not exactly the same. But it is what it is, but it's pretty darn close. See, so that's about 50. That other one's probably about 50 also. So, in any case, that's just to show you that it's actually the same. So, that's the can range control for the inset. Oh, so you click that off. And the barometric pressure is the round one on the outside and the course for this right here is on the inside. So that's uh, pretty easy and self-explanatory. It's a switch between the nav one and nav two. You push the button, you actually push it like that, and it goes. So you can tune the frequency normally, big one, left one, big one, small one, doesn't matter. And then to switch it, you of course click that, just like your normal radios, right? And the nice part down here, waypoint, that's your FXE, that's Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, distance, direct track, and the track that you're actually heading right now. So what would be normally be on that little G430 or 530 is actually on the top of your PFD right now. And also it's on the other page too. I'll show you right now. Oh, actually, no, excuse me. It shows the time. So it gives you everything you will need and want in split. So in any case that's uh, that feature now there's another feature on this one that could be cool could be interesting if you ever go into like mountainous areas or something is topography see so in order to change the topography change it to topography what you have to do is there was a map button right down here okay there's all and this also does the traffic as well so you see all the different little airplanes around so there's traffic, topography, etc. So click back. So map. Get a couple different features right here. And the real G1000, I'm sure it has more. I just don't remember right there off the top of my head. But that's what that is. So topography shows the grass and the, excuse me, the land and the water. And then you want the traffic also. Get the basic traffic. Okay. Another thing that's pretty neat with the G1000 is that it shows you different V-speeds as you're taking off. So when you're getting there, it shows you different V-speeds. And actually, this is good right here. So see the green arc, the white arc, and actually this is the VSI. I forgot to mention that earlier. This is the altitude that what you set in the autopilot. I'll show you that a little later. And, well, that's the pretty much it. function right down here. You just put in the altitude you want. And you click autopilot, altitude. And then, remember I told you, it goes off the GPS, so uh, you have to click Nav. Okay? And it holds it right there for you. And then to go back to uh, VFR, all you gotta do is push Transponder, VFR, then back, and you're good. So cruising along at 1,500 feet, and direct from Kendall Tamiami Airport, also known as Miami Executive Airport, all the way to Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. So. We have a distance of 33.4 nautical miles to go, a direct track of 0 to 9 and then the track of 050. And why? Because, well, the GPS is still intercepting. And then we go on the navigation display. You see the little airplane? Right here. And the line. And yes, I am busting through airspace because it's a simulator and nothing will happen. Okay? So in case you're wondering.
So I don't get any uh, lip from anyone. <laughs> but in any case, seriously though, ground speed, it shows right there how much you're off the track, and then the estimated time in route. So there you go. That's the features of when you are flying. Of course, right over here, you're in the green arc, of course, because, well, this is a normal cruising speed for the 172. And as you can see, we're intercepting right now, so the plane is turning and lining us with the magenta line that's on the map that we can put into the FMC, uh, the, excuse me, FMC, the uh, G1000, the, the GPS. I'm so used to doing big jets, this is the first time I do a little one, so you have to forgive me. Well, left bus, right bus, fuel quantity, vacuum gauge, EGT, oil temperature, oil pressure, fuel flow, gallons per hour, and then of course the RPM gauge, tachometer. And actually what you can do is you can do the same thing over here as you can do over here. And so if you've got a co-pilot, you know, who's familiar enough, they could actually uh, help you out a little, which is really nice, actually. And of course, the engine hours is right there. So right now in the simulator, I've flown this Cessna G1000 for 18 and a half All hours. All right, so according to this, we are three minutes out or so. And this is the airplane, this is us. There's Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. Here's Opalaka, Opalaka Airport in HWO. HWO is a little executive airport in Broward County. Opalaka is actually in northern Miami-Dade County. Both are pretty good airports. Uh, I've never been to this one. This one and this one have uh, two locations of a uh, flight school called Wayman Aviation. It's really good. I've flown there a couple times before. And uh, also here is another flight school where my friend actually is a CFI called ATA Flight School. Okay, Fort Lauderdale International Airport and Pompano Beach. Yeah, Pompano Beach actually has a, a flight school called American Flyers. And I think uh, every first Saturday, I don't know if they do it anymore, but every first Saturday they have a, a free seminar and a, a barbecue, you know, with burgers and things like that. So it's pretty interesting. In any case, oh, and also the other thing, you can see the age of this uh, program, X46. X46 used to, is no longer in existence. So in any case, so what you do is, so when you're coming up on the approach, click Procedure, P-R-O-C, right over here. Okay, select approach, you click enter, and then you're going to get all these different approaches. Okay, and to switch between them, you just close the knob and you switch through it, of course. And of course, the simulator is giving me issues, so I'm not just going to bother. So I'm just going to keep it uh, simple and just click ILS runway 8. So click enter, and down here, ugh, there we go, enter. Now, vectors, if you want, if it's going to be like a vector from the ATC or either one of these two transitions. So, enter, I'm just going to make it easy, enter vectors, and then load or activate. So, I'm going to click activate. Oh, good, it finally worked. It's the big outside uh, knob right here that lets you scroll. So, enter, activate, and there's the uh, all the fixes for the uh, flight plan, for the uh, ILS approach. Oh, distance, total distance, etc., etc. Oh, well, clear it, and that's it. Actually, on the real uh, G1000, I believe there's also, I don't remember exactly, but there's also a profile picture that you can see of the ILS. So it's pretty neat. And here is the approach course, the missed approach course, and the, and the holding pattern.